Okay, for those of you who've never seen me before, I'm Phil Ponder. I teach at PEGS, and I think because I'm so slow and methodical, I've got behind some of the other classes. So if you're already ahead of this, then you can just watch the colour and motion, but otherwise I'm catching up with my group that only got up to question 66. So we'll pick it up from there. We're doing fuel cells which are really important for the VCAR exams. VCAR love testing fuel cells. So we want to be as familiar as possible with what's going on. And the hydrogen oxygen fuel cell in particular is the one that they really love. But you've got to be prepared for other ones. And uh, when we introduced this, we said, okay, this is really good practice at writing half equations, but not because you have to, you just have to know where to find them in the electrochemical series. So we'll quickly review that by having a look at some of those rules we went through last time. Not so interested in that one. Nothing to memorise. If it's not in the E0 table in your electrochemical series, then it would have to be something you derive on the spot. So in summary, we've got to be able to cope with acidic electrolytes, alkaline electrolytes. We should not have to deal with solid oxides. Worth having a look at just in case, but it's not memorizable and it's not in the electrochemical series. And we'll have a quick look at a few uh, fuel cells that run on things other than hydrogen, because that's applying the principles. So remember for the acidic hydrogen oxygen fuel cell, we know what the fuels are. And if it's an acid electrolyte, you do not go near the exam without knowing that oxygen will be reduced and hydrogen will be oxidized. And they are in what I would call a favorable diagonal where the E naught of the oxidant is greater than the E naught of the reductant. But that's the logic for predicting why the reaction is spontaneous, because the E naught of the oxidant, oxygen, is greater than the E naught of the reductant, hydrogen. And visually on your electrochemical series, what you're looking for is this favorable diagonal. But you're not allowed to use that term on an exam, so I'm going to, from now on, just call it a fav diag, short for favorable diagonal. When you do electrolysis, you'll see that there's lots of unfavorable diagonals, and that just means you need energy to make them go. Favorable diagonal, the E0 oxidant greater than the E0 reductant, you have got a spontaneous redox reaction. Doesn't tell you it's going to be fast, tells you nothing about the rate of the reaction, and that's coming up in book four, rates of reaction. So with the acidic one, which oxygen do we choose? Well, we don't choose the one that involves hydroxide ions. So there is an oxygen half reaction down here, but it's got OH minus on the other side. Ignore that one. And there's a hydrogen one down here, but it's got hydroxide. So we ignore that one. So the one we want in an acid electrolyte is the one that's got H plus. You don't have to memorize it. It's sitting staring at you in the electrochemical series. It might be worth memorizing. It's at plus 1.23. And then the hydrogen one is the one at 0, 0.00, which of course means under standard conditions, you should get a voltage and EMF of 1.23 volts, the difference in the electrode potentials. So we've looked at that and you can see it doesn't look anything like two, two beakers with two electrodes, but you can always represent the chemistry with that and then just see how it would compare to here. So we can see on the diagram, it shows you which way the electrons are going. That then tells you which is the negative electrode, which is the positive electrode. Negative electrode, electrons coming out. This is oxidation. This is reduction. And therefore, this is the anode. This electrode must be the anode. And this electrode must be the cathode. So you can deduce that from any diagram that you're given that doesn't look like the familiar two beakers with two electrodes and a salt bridge between them because no commercial cell would ever look like that, too inconvenient. 
So read through the notes, make sure you're as familiar as possible, but no half reactions to memorise, just know where to find them on the electrochemical series. But that's just the acid electrolyte. You must check the wording of the question. Is it an acid electrolyte? Choose them. Or is it an alkaline electrolyte? Coming up soon. When you add the two halves, you should get the overall equation the same as you would get if you were burning hydrogen. But this is a much more efficient way to get electricity rather than having to go through burning the hydrogen, producing heat, boiling water, steam turns a turbine, incredibly inefficient with all that heat. You always get waste heat, so it's never efficient if you're getting electricity by burning a fuel. Much more efficient, cut out the middleman of heat and try to get the chemical energy going directly to electrical energy in a fuel cell. That's the benefit of a fuel cell. All right, I'll skip through some of the easier questions, but just make sure we can look at a diagram like that. And without even looking at the question, you've got to be given some information. Either you're told what the reactants and products are, or you're told anode and cathode, or you're told negative, positive, or you're told direction of electron flow. From that, you can deduce everything. In this particular example, you're told this is the anode. So that must be where oxidation's occurring. So this must be the fuel the fuel that gets oxidised. And then presumably the Y will be the oxygen coming in and being reduced. But I'm going to let you do those multiple choice questions, skip through them. I want to go straight to, because they're nice, relatively easy ones. 